Hello, it's Alex here, also known as Default Sound, and today I have a new video for you guys. A little bit off the scheduled tutorials, but I think you, many of you may find this interesting and useful. So today I'm going to present a script I've been working on for Blender, it's an add-on, that essentially should help you with producing game assets and speeding up the workflow of producing the assets and getting them into engine. Now the idea for this script stemmed actually from a recent GDC talk from this year. Uh, Michael Pavlic um, presented a talk on um, how they produced the assets in the Halo 2 anniversary game and what he was talking about is kind of the future of uh, how well, actually, it's the talk's called Blurring the Separation Between Concept and Production. But he goes into talk of t talking and starts talking about how we can automate a lot of the processes that really, we, as us as artists, we don't really need to do. And simple things like selecting color IDs or, you know, creating the low poly mesh and stuff like this, you know, we can kind of let the computer do that. So this got me thinking, I thought, well, uh, the tools they came up with looked really good and, and this is kind of uh, an example of that uh, they've got this tool that allows them to select you know the directory or uh, I can assume like the the low poly and uh, high poly meshes and then the outputs all the files to where they need to go and um, so this got me thinking uh, you know in Blender this could be a approached in a similar manner it could quite easily use some of the modifiers and kind of automate that process and that's kind of what I've done and I'm going to show you um, cr briefly uh, what I've done so just wanted to show you he basically talks about we can essentially create a sketch you know however we want and then quickly just you know bake that out and get in an engine it's not going to be perfect but we have a better understanding of how that's going to look in the game and maybe there'll be something we see where oh that's not going to work so you can iterate and quickly change that so that's kind of what this script is and today I'm going to show you what I've come up with um, for Blender so what I've come up with is a tool called or an add-on called Alpha Mesher and what this is is a, a collation of certain tools that I think are quite useful to kind of mimic what um, Michael was talking about in the talk so um, what I've done is I've kind of following from what he, he is, his idea was I've created some tools to help uh, streamline the processes of creating a high poly mesh for example and then eventually creating a low poly mesh so I'm going to quickly show you what you can do with this tool so here I've got like a, a simple sci-fi panel if we look at the geometry it is really bad you know I used a um, ball tool for to create a lot of this and that's going to leave you with a lot of engons and you know uneven faces so you, you wouldn't want to work with a mesh like this to correct it or to add supporting edge loops would be a nightmare however that's where the first tool we've got here is um, what I've called high poly slash remeshing so essentially it's not and I just want to put a disclaimer out here that I haven't really added anything to Blender. This is kind of just an automation tool. Some but you click a button and it adds some modifiers. Um, I've only been scripting in Blender for about a week now, so my code probably might not be that great. But I think these things might help many of you and just help you quickly uh, speed up your workflow. So this first button here will um, essentially is kind of the equivalent of um, Dynamesh, I suppose, in some way. Um, what I've done, as you can see here in the modifiers panel, when I click that button, it's going to duplicate and add a, a new mesh. And then remeshing that mesh, and uh, we just need to hide all the stuff we don't want. And this is our the result. As you can see, it's not great at the moment. It's kind of mushy. So we just increase the arc tree depth and the remesh modifier here. And Blender will start to get a bit laggy. But as you can see, we've, we've kind of retained those shapes. And um, yeah, we've got nice... Uh, hard edges and smoothing. It was a very dense mesh and then this approach is where you subdivide the mesh to a point where you can't see uh, the, uh, the, 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 the well it smooths correctly. It's not too great on sort of angles and cylinders but for hard surface stuff this is really good I found. There's certain things I'm going to talk about in a separate video but this is kind of the gist of how it works. So then you can say okay I'm happy with that we've got our high poly there we can then apply that uh, to the, the mesh now. 
It's going to take a while because in the code what I've done is it's applying all the modifiers and then it will decimate the mesh. Now it may seem silly like we've added all these polygons and now you're removing them but what I've done is I've remeshed it to the point where it's going to support all the, the edges we want and then I'm des or on subdividing it to make it more friendly to work with. So this is going to take a while because, um, oh there we go, it's done. So don't worry, it will, it will say not responding but after a while it will come back. And now it's slightly less dense, um, still quite dense but slightly less. And now you could actually carry on working with this or you know take it into sculpting and carry on. Um, but anyway, say that we're happy with that. I can then quickly come up to here. Uh, actually we can just quickly clean up our meshes here. So what I do is I create a um, a duplicate of that to um, help the shrink wrap modifier. So um, that's how that works. I'll talk through all these buttons eventually in a separate video. Uh, but this is just the, the basic idea of how this works. So then I can click another button. It will automatically create a higher low poly mesh for me. There we go. It will also create all our UVs for us and apply where we have um, UV seams and uh, correctly give us the um, sharp edges where we need them. We can then also, uh, for baking purposes, we can quickly uh, click make a cage and that will make a cage for us. And then eventually you can take those assets out and I'll show you, for example, if you want, so we literally click two buttons at this point in time. And then you can take it to a program like Substance the Designer, which is kind of what this has been designed for, this um, add-on specifically. Import our low poly and high poly meshes, bake out the maps, and because we're baking out, uh, we can even bake out color IDs, we can quickly just ma map all the, the, you know, the specific materials we want to our model, and it's a lot quicker to uh, texture when we get, you know, clean quite clean normals considering we've clicked a button you know there's no that's the bake re baking result um, on our low poly there I mean I think there's one possibly a couple of errors but considering we've clicked the button to make the low poly we haven't re apologized it that's quite a clean bake that we have there so that's the basic basic gist of this this plugin is to help you create alpha meshes to test whether or not something's going to work. So you don't have to go through all these processes of creating the high poly, uh, creating a high poly and then retopologizing it. You can just quickly do something quick and dirty, get it into engine, see how it looks. But also these tools can also be used in different stages in the pipeline. So say for example, you've got a a high poly mesh already, you can quickly make a low poly, so there's no you don't necessarily have to use the remeshing tool. You can also, you know, for example, you've already got um, an unwrap, you can also quickly make a cage. And so it's kind of opens how you approach it. And that's basically the basic idea of this add-on. So I hope this video has been uh interests you and um has been a quick introduction to what it does. And in the next few videos I'm going to explain each feature in depth and how to correctly use them.